Hello again, it's Mr. Pete. Welcome back to Studio B. I think most of you that have been following my channel for years know that I have been interested in hit and miss engines. In fact, I have owned many of them in my life and I have a lot of videos on those but they're pretty old ones and remember I finally got out of the business because these machines are so heavy and hard for me to move around that I sold three of them to Jimmy DeResta so he's got them out there in New York but I need to work with smaller things so thanks to Engine DIY Shop they sent along a beautiful little model of a hit and miss engine no charge to me but uh, this is not a kit. This is available two different ways. There's a kit and then this one is partially assembled. That is, it's 90% assembled. Just a few little things to put together. So in this video, I'm going to put this thing together and get it running and talk a little bit about it. I hope you enjoy the video. Stick with me. If you're interested in, the, in this, I'll have links in the description. I might point out that Engine DIY Shop is the distributor and it's here in the United States. Naturally these are made overseas, but notice that it says RTR here and that means ready to run. Well, it's not quite ready to run, but it's certainly not a kit with a hundred pieces when we open the box. Astute observers may notice that I made another video on a product from Retrol. And it was this beam engine, so there are videos on that as well. And this is really a neat engine, very well designed and very well built. And I think that this one will be as well. Notice the name here, Retrol and Musa. That is the name of the manufacturer. This is the distributor. In review, you can order this engine from Engine DIY Shop. And there's the website. And the specs on this engine are... It's a four-stroke, water-cooled, hit-and-miss, 7cc displacement, cylinder diameter is 20 millimeters, and the stroke is 22.3 millimeters. You might remember that my friend Troy sent me this little Ertl model of a hit-and-miss engine. Now, this is not operational. It's just a toy and for appearance, but it's pretty awesome as well. So we'll see how this compares in size to this model, and thank you, Troy, for that. I know how you people out there dread the unboxing, so I'm not going to do that. I'll take everything out off camera so that it is not too painful for you. Okay, here's what came in the box. First of all, the base or the skid is nicely made and it's rosewood. So it's really very pretty wood. As is the little box for the battery and the ignition. With finger joints on it, really quite precision. Looks like a little jewelry box. There's the brass fuel tank and glass on each end so you don't need a fuel gauge. And there is the exhaust stack. Almost looks like an old steam train, steam locomotive, doesn't it? Now this came with it and I asked them to, to include this but it may be at extra cost for some people. I really don't know but that's the spark ignition module and in this bag are some extra parts uh, these are extra o-rings i think maybe for the fuel tank i'm not real sure and some screws and a little brass strip for the fuel tank and here of course is the engine itself now in the video description or i should say in the description from diy they claim that the castings are stainless steel. So I, I don't really know, but they sure are shiny and nice, at least the flywheel is. And look at the look at the quality of that casting. Pretty amazing. It's got a, a little brass drip oiler, brass oil cups right there. And then over on the other side here is the governor because this is a hit and miss and a little throttle control there we'll talk more about and there you can see the valves on the end the little brass carburetor and I don't want to drop this it's quite heavy there again is the model it's really neat 
Now it has to be put on the stand here or the flywheel would hit the table. There were no instructions included. I do not know if they just omitted them or forgot them. But anyway, I was able to print out a set from the internet. And there's a lot more than this. This is just the basics. I forgot to show you this. This is the rope starter, like a Briggs and Stratton. <laughs> kind of funny. But I had to order a spark plug. And here it is. I, I ordered that over Amazon. Tiny little thing, and that was $15. Wow. And I also had to order a battery. Well, you had to buy two of them. <laughs> and a charger. And I think that was about 20 bucks. So I got a few dollars in this, but th thank you to the company that sent that to me at no charge. Also included the fuel line. Again, the brass straps for the fuel tank. Not sure what that is yet. A spring, two springs, extra O-rings, and the screws. So the first thing I will do off camera is to go ahead and fasten the engine itself onto the base. And there are pre-drilled holes here, as you can see. Well, that completes mounting the engine onto the base. And by the way, these are socket head screws, even though they're wood screws. And they are metric, so keep that in mind. That being done, we're ready to put the fuel tank, and it goes on the front like this. There's the little nipple on the bottom. And the little brass straps need to be pre-bent like that. I use Bernard's for that, and then they need to be formed around the tank like this. It's soft brass. And I'm tightening the last of the four screws to hold the gas tank down. I've already mounted the fuel line to the bottom nipple there, and I need to cut it off to length. I hope this is fuel resistance, but I have enough here to make another one. So I'm just going to cut it off there at the appropriate length and fasten it onto the little nipple there on the carburetor. This is the spark plug that I bought off of the internet and notice that it's a one quarter 32. It probably fits a lot of different models. Yeah, $15. Remember when all plugs were 99 cents and that wasn't that long ago. Now it'll take a 516 socket. My fingers are so big and clumsy. It's like working with baseball gloves on. There's not much clearance in the casting, so you need a 516 socket. And someone had ground this one down years ago, but it fits just right. This other one will not fit. Now we also need to torque this for best results, of course. So I'll just snug it up. And using my tiny little torque wrench that came from the great West Clocks factory. I will torque it to 5 inch ounces. Mm, mm. The exhaust stack is threaded. So that's simple enough. What I want to point out now is that at some point here, and it will not be in this video, I will mount the rosewood box like this or like this with an attempt to put the module in there and maybe the battery. I don't know how much, if there's enough room for both. And I may have to drill some holes in the box. There are no pre-mounted or pre-drilled holes here for mounting it and nothing mentioned in the directions. But that's the purpose of the box. If you've ever been to an engine show, you might see some people that have larger engines set up with ignition boxes or coils or many different types. Well, this wiring is a real cluster, as you can see. So the best I can show you here is that this is the charging cord for the battery, USB on this end, 
and that's the white one so I'm going to take that off we don't need that anymore I did charge it up overnight so the black one here is the one we need to connect to the coil pack here and I've already made this connection here to the engine and that fit up nice but this these aren't the right connectors here they aren't even close well in the kit they included this little cord and so I'll put that in but they're just bare wires on the end and I did tin them so they're a little bit stiffer and I'm just going to at least temporarily push them into this connector here red on red and black on black and then I do believe that this is a ground and I'll put that right on that screw I might have to scrape a little paint off the red wire is the spark plug wire and I stripped it back just a little bit and this is the boot that goes onto the spark plug so I will thread I, gotta, I will thread this into this little hole yeah that's what I'm going to do well I took the spark plug back out and I want to check to see if I have spark before I get foolish here and put fuel in it so watch the plug yeah, I hope that shows up and I did get a shock a couple times so <laughs> the spark works this is 10 weight oil I'm about ready to try to fire this up so I'll put a little bit into the drip lubricating lubricator or oiler right there and this is still in the off position when I'm ready to run it I will raise the little lever right here and it will drip, drip directly onto the piston, piston or into the cylinder don't leave that on or all the, all the oil will run through also a little bit of oil in this bearing cup and this one couple drops down here and in fact any place where there are moving parts such as right here into the governor a little bit onto the gears and so on use your best judgment if it moves it needs lubrication this engine is water cooled this is the hopper as you well know so I'm actually going to run it dry to see if it starts before I make a, bet, a mess but I'm going to use distilled water and for best results use great value purified distilled water this is Clark super 100 gasoline thousands say it's best in an un unapproved container I could be arrested I do so many things where I could be arrested now that's a tiny hole so I'm using my heroin syringe for that hope I don't get any gasoline in my veins tonight now the directions say you can use there's no vent lighter fluid like Ronson lighter fluid well there it is chugging away just a beautiful piece now I must tell you make sure you either unplug or pull a wire out or whatever I want to install a switch because the electronic unit here does warm up which means that there's current going through there all the time and it will kill your battery but, but of course we got rechargeable batteries but I need to wire the whole thing off camera including a switch but isn't that running nicely now to start with I was running it on Clark Super 100 but now I'm running it on white gas and that's it there's no difference really no big deal all right now that that's off maybe you can hear me better of course the starter is a rope just like a Briggs and Stratton but I'm too lazy to use that so I have an electric start so get a load of this I've just got a big old rubber chemistry cork in the DeWalt this isn't even running through but it doesn't seem to matter and I simply put this into the starting cup over here slicker and a whistle give that a try make sure you have your oiler on okay it's time to take my specimen and pour it into the hopper 
We don't want it to overheat, do we? Oh boy, that didn't take much. Now it's going to be a mess. i got to drain some of that out of there. There's no good way to get that extra fluid out of there, so I'm just going to use a drinking straw. Wow, is that salty! Okay, let's start that up one more time. Oh, we got a puff of smoke. Wow, what a sweet running engine. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, I got links in the description. If you're interested in this, it's a little bit pricey, but boy, is it nice. See, there's tremendous, exquisite workmanship on this, both the design and the execution. Well, there it is, chugging away. Little bit of a vibration, but you expect that with a hit and miss engine. Look at the governor. And yes, I need to get all the wiring inside of the little rosewood box. Well, there it is, purring along nicely. Isn't it a beautiful little engine? The color is Ferrari red, of all things. Get yourself one. Take a look down in the description for all kinds of links that might be meaningful to you. This is Mr. Pete saying, so long for now. Now when you're done, don't forget to turn off the oiler and unplug the battery unless you have a switch, which I intend to install sooner or later.